Frosty fam, it's me, Karen Frost, here at Nail Decadence. Woo -hoo. Welcome, welcome, one and all. So, have another video for you, just showing you what I'm using. Oh, this glitter is from all that sparkles, and it's called Ginger, that brown one. Really pretty, but it's hard to see the label because the writing is black on a clear base. So, yeah. But anyway, that's what it's using. That blue is a colour that I mixed myself. I mix a lot of my acrylic colours myself. And if you are interested, I will leave a link in the cards right here to a video of how I make my own custom acrylic colours. So the yes, these are all the bits that I'll be using for this. It's, oh, it's most. It's all now. I mix all of my apart from that acrylic um, from Ink London. The rest is all now. All of my colours that I mix myself, I always use Nao, so I know which brand is in those little pots. Keep it consistent, you know. Anyway, so on to the doing of the nails. First things first, I'll apply my thin clear base. You may not always see me do this, but do I? I do every set I will always put on a thin clear base I don't always include it in the video but it's always it's always a given it's routine for me there are many reasons for having a thin clear base it has it's clear acrylic because it has no mica powders or pigments in it it has the best adhesion it is the strongest it protects the nail plate from any staining of any acrylic colours and it also gives you something to file back to so that you're not filing into your natural nail. I will not remove the clear thin base from my nail unless it is lifted and and then only those lifted parts. Therefore I'm not re-prepping my nail every two weeks because if you think about how often you do your nails and if you do them every two weeks and you are prepping that entire nail every two weeks that's that's a lot of prep going on and nails are not that thick you know so you don't really want to be taking off a couple of layers every two weeks because you're going to end up with a very thin nail by the time it reaches your free edge so just bear that in mind there's absolutely no reason or need to remove your thin clear base unless the acrylic has lifted keep it as a protective layer on your nails Anyway, whilst I've been waffling on, I have done the ring finger in just a full nail of white acrylic powder and now I'm doing a reverse French nail. So, do my nail bed, it's an extended nail bed, reverse French extended nail bed. Brought that quite far down the, <coughs> excuse me, quite far down the nail because this set is, it, it's an extreme set, it's a very long set. So, I wanted to make sure that the extended nail bed was quite far down, you know. Otherwise it would look weird if it was too short. I think I could have even brought it, to, to be honest, a bit further down. It could have, because of the length of the nail, I could have brought it down a little bit more, to be honest. But um, yeah, that's, this, that's the length I decided on at the time. On to the index finger and I have applied the cover pink to the cuticle area and brought that down on its diagonal. As you can see, I'm building, <coughs> excuse me, I'm building my wall because I'm going to be doing a colour block. So, yeah, you need a nice wall to butt your colours up to and that is what I'm creating at this moment. Obviously, I made sure that the cuticle area was nice and neat and that I have enough colour for coverage, but I will be capping so I'm not building it up too high. Um, yeah. And now I will use my craft knife to cut in my colour block to save me having to um, faff about with filing the colour block in. I decided to use my craft knife and cut some sharp lines rather than file them in. I change my method all the time. Sometimes I file in, sometimes I use my craft knife, you know, it depends on the mood I'm in on the day and whether I actually remember that I own a craft knife because a lot of the time I totally forget I even own one because yeah, I have dory brain. 
anyway, <laughs> now that I cut that uh, cover pink, I'm applying that deep, almost brown burgundy red. You guys are seeing a lot of red nails from me and a lot of burgundy. <laughs> I like red. It's one of my favourite colours, if not the favourite colour of mine. All different tones of red, but my, you know, wine and burgundy reds are just, there's something about them. Plummy reds, oh, stunning. Anyway, so I've applied that and I'm cutting that in with my craft knife also to give me another sharp line to butt my next colour up to. I'm trying not to overlap them too much, um, but I do want the colour right up and almost over the top of the first colour so that I get, when I fire it in, I get a nice sharp line because that's the whole point of cutting it in and getting doing a colour block is so that you've got crisp lines and definition between each colour. It's, yeah it's important if 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 that's what you're going for if you're going for straightish lines i mean yes it's diagonal but you know what i mean it's a straight line you do want that wow factor of it being a nice crisp line at the end of the day because that's the whole point so yeah anyway i'm adding my next color which is the sort of sky blue again it's same same thing i'm butting it up to the previous colors in the shape that i'm going for i'm going for a sort of a plait design if that makes sense they're kind of overlapping each color but yeah it's, it's it looks a bit like a plait and i really like that do like that it's it's a cool it's a cool look it's different i didn't want to just go with just stripes if that makes sense I wanted to give it a little something different and um, yeah I decided on this kind of plait style design or lattice whatever you'd like to call it so I cut that blue in again with my craft knife and now I'm applying the white and again I'm bringing it down on a <coughs> diagonal slant because I need the next colour to be in between the white and the blue because we're going for that whole plait design and again cut that in try and get that line as neat and as sharp as I can get it I'm just removing some of the acrylic from the base of the nail although it's not that important because you're putting another colour over the top I'm just fussy so yeah you don't have to spend quite as much time faffing as I do <laughs> but yeah I you will see when I put on the next colour, you won't see those little bits of white that are stuck to the nail. It's not such a big deal. And like I said, I'm not trying to get it messy, messy, which is why I've overlapped the colours a little bit, but not too much. For the last section, I'm going to be using this glitter mix. It was just a random glitter mix again that I had. Mm, I don't know where it's from I think it might have been Aliexpress or something like that but it's a cute sort of it's got the colors that I'm using it's got the blue it's got this kind of reddish color it's got some pink in it it's got some gold in it I thought it would go well with the colors that I'm using so yeah I'm just using that on the last section and I'm also adding some gold leaf well it's like copper leaf type stuff adding a bit of that as well it just to tie in some of the other elements that I will be adding on another nail that you will see shortly so I'm just going to cap that glitter and uh, gold leaf obviously I want to protect them and encapsulate them so that when I file in that lattice plait design the glitter will be protected and now I'm going to add the water decal so these are the water decals from print by example details in the description below I'm also going to be using my deionized water I've mentioned before I keep the deionized water in a bottle on my desk for these purposes and because it's deionized water it does not promote the growth of bacteria which is something that's quite important because if you were to put a bottle of tap water on your desk within three days you'll have bacteria and that it's not um, not ideal and definitely not safe to use so yeah bear that in mind so I 
soaked my decal in that deionized water on a little lint-free pad, removed it from the backing. Before I did that, I applied a thin layer of clear base coat, gel base coat, which allows me to slide the decal wherever I'd like it to go without having to worry about it drying on the nail before I position it where I want it to go. And then I will again, um, I will cure that. Then I'll add another layer of the base coat over the decal because they aren't they're not chemical resistant these ones so you do have to sort of encapsulate it with the gel polish to protect it from melting and if you just like I said base coat which helps you slide it in place first of all then cure it then add another of a layer of base coat over the top of it it really does the job basically it just protects it and you can then go in and do whatever else you need to do and encapsulate it with the peace of mind that it's not going to affect the decal after that so once i'd cured the base coat over the decal now i'm adding all different colors of glitters that i'm adding that glitter mix that i put on the free edge of the index finger i'm adding some other glitter mixes well no it's not they're not mixes they're just it's a brown and a you know coppery color and the blue color just loose um fine glitters i've placed those all around the decal to just give it a little background i didn't want the whole nail to be plain with just the face on it so these these decals are really detailed so i think i could have done with a bit less glitter to be honest to not overpower the decal if i did this set again i would put less around it because i wanted the decal didn't stand out as much as i would have liked because the glitter was a bit of a distraction around it. it's too busy you can't really appreciate the decal um yeah so bear that in mind <laughs> don't overpower the decal like i did but i mean it still looked pretty just um you know when you look back at something you you know you'll you'll see little things that you think oh i could have tweaked it there if i was to do it again i'd tweak it this way anyway so i'm just encapsulating that nail and this is where i'm thinking of my shape and structure because when i applied that uh white i only did that for color not for strength even though it is strength powder i use my colors for color only i use get my strength from my clear with my capping layer that's where i think about my apex and the structure of the nail yeah and now i'm now that i've finished capping that ring finger with the decal on it i'm using the colours to do a marble because I like marbles. <laughs> they're, they're, they're easy to do, they're effective, they're beautiful, they're different. Every time you do them, you'll never get two marbles the same ever. And there's no hard fast rules about a marble, you know, you're just mixing colours together in a, in a swirlish pattern. And yeah, it's just effective and an. An, a very easy way to give a, a wow a wow nail and just tie all of the colors that you're using in the set together so yeah just a a marble all the way down the nail so i'm using small beads and they're very runny because you want to be able to swirl and get a nice what's the word i'm looking for yeah it is just a swirl of colors so if it's not if the beads aren't wet enough you won't be able to get a really good swirl um so that's all i that's all i do with my with my marble sometimes i do go you know use a double bead pick up and put it by the cuticle first sometimes i do that but i don't always so yeah th there's there's no hard fast rules of a marble just go with the flow and i'm also adding some glitter of course because it's very rare for me to do a marble without glitter because i'm a i'm a little bit of a magpie and again i'm putting way too much glitter on and i'm covering up that marble which was actually a pretty marble it's a shame i covered it with so much glitter but yeah i do get carried away and just 
put too much on the nails because that's what I do. <laughs> so I'm also adding some of the foil, the gold leaf, onto that marble nail as well to tie it in to I want the set to flow so I want all of the fingers nails uh -huh, to be a set that gel together in harmony <laughs> so yeah that's what I that's what I'm aiming for when I'm doing these nails sometimes I plan out my designs sometimes I just wing it and go with the flow and sometimes I plan it and then as I'm doing it I change my mind and do something completely different so yeah just go with your gut <laughs> it's nice to plan the nails but sometimes plans don't, um, don't go the way you want them to and you have to adapt so yeah you have to have some, a bit of flexibility in your designing and it's always fun to just grab some random bits out of your stash and just make it up as you go and then like I said you can also plan so yeah I'm just going to cap that index no it's the middle finger capping the middle finger the marble marbles are always lumpy and bumpy don't worry about it just cap it as best you can make sure your shape and structure is there and then you can file it and a lot of the times with marbles you can file a little bit into them without it being a big issue but where I've got glitter and the foil on um well gold leaf on I don't want to file into it so I do keep my layers as thin as I can get them be before I cap so that I don't file into the design so I've gone back to the little finger and I'm just filing in that reverse French extended nail bed and whilst I've got my um, products covered with the kitchen roll I thought I'd just go in with my e-file and reveal the lines of the color block whilst I'm at it because like I said that nail still needs to be capped I've only applied the colors fairly thinly so yeah I will have to add my shape and structure with my clear acrylic once I finished filing in those lines and they've come up quite nicely I was quite pleased with this they came out quite sharp which was um, very pleasing I do like a filing reveal it is good fun there we go, almost there. Just where that burgundy and blue meat just needed a little bit more. So I was quite happy with that. So now I will carry on with the little finger and then I'll go back to the index finger and cap it. So I've just dampened down that extended nail bed and now I'm adding that sort of burgundy brownish colour around the extended nail bed and I'm butting it right up against it and slightly over it because again it just makes for a nice crisp reveal if you do that sometimes I don't overlap the colors as much just to keep it neat sometimes I cap the nail bed area first and then use my color and, and you know don't go over it as much but yeah there's different ways to do color blocks and um, extended nail beds and Frenches and, and what have you and it all depends on the mood of the day I just yeah I just start and we'll see how it goes so once I've applied that brownish color around that extended nail bed I'm doing somewhat of an ombre so I've pulled the brownish red down a the nail just a little bit not too much and then I'm adding the blue to the free edge and we'll be sort of blending the two colors as they meet into a, a ombre so I will go back and forth be with between the two colors and work my ombre that way with just teeny teeny weeny teeny weeny beads because that brown is, is very strong it can overpower the blue very easily so tiny beads just in between and and blending that 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 middle where they meet it just it's easier to get an ombre that way if you just work it thinly because I'm still got on it I'm still going to encapsulate so you do have to keep these layers thin and yeah 
got the ombre the way I wanted it and now I'm adding some of these gold studs which I will encapsulate of course so I'm adding those in a line down the center of the nail if the acrylic has dried I will add just a smidge of clear acrylic to give the studs something to st stick to and the acrylic will hold them in place so I've put as many as I can fit on to the nail and now I'm using some of um, the glitter with just a, a clear bead of acrylic and I'm butting that up against the extended nail bed also I'm making sure I'm bringing it right up the wings because it is a very very deep smile line so yeah <clears throat> it's got to go quite far up the nail I mean it's pretty much to the cuticle so yeah just adding some of that glitter to give it a sparkle that was an afterthought as I was looking at the nail I decided to do that like I said plans don't always go exactly as you um think they're going to go so you know no problem in changing your mind as you go so now that I've I'm happy with that I will encapsulate it and protect those studs and my ombre and of course the glitter also but because I haven't capped the nail bed area the extended nail bed area um once I file in to reveal the sharp lines and the crisp lines I will have to cap that nail bed area afterwards also so I should have capped it really beforehand before I put the color on around it but yeah like I said it depends on how I'm doing at the time if I have the forethought <laughs> of um, doing it sometimes I remember to do it sometimes I don't you know it is what it is it's not a problem I mean I suppose time wise it would be better if you weren't going to file and then cap and then file again ideally but yeah I don't I'm you know this is on a practice hand I I don't have a client waiting I don't have a time limit so when I'm doing the nails I, I take my time and enjoy enjoy the playing that I'm doing because it's my little escapism my playtime and I enjoy doing them so yeah I take my time I'm not in a hurry so yeah if you're in a hurry and you've got clients then plan planning a set makes much more sense and doing it in a logical order so that you are not wasting time that is important if you are a, a you know a busy working nail tech that has clients you do have to manage your time a lot better than than what I'm doing <laughs> very important you don't want your clients waiting because you're still busy with someone else that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good definitely not anyway so I've gone back to that color block now and I'm encapsulating it this is where I'm thinking of my shape and structure I want to make sure there's a decent apex on these they are extremely long they do need a, a decent apex not a huge one but you know decent because you do want them to be strong last thing you want is to snap a nail that's not fun not that handle is going to be doing anything to snap a nail <laughs> she's not washing up is she <laughs> it's a shame <laughs> I could do with that helping hand literally <laughs> so yeah just uh, capping that I got a bit of glitter on the cover pink which I wasn't happy about so I just sort of scooped it out with my brush and then sorted it out with a bit more clear acrylic I'm looking at that now from all angles I'm looking from side both sides I'm looking down the barrel and I'm making sure that it's um, it's even and curved in the way that I need it to when you know like I said decent apex but not too thick and now I will file in that nail bed reverse French area to reveal hopefully crisp lines because it, that's the that's the aim of course you know you're not filing it in when you first apply it you're not filing it in not to have straight lines on the reveal so yeah it's always a bit satisfying we'll say when you 
you file away and you've got this nice crisp line you're like oh satisfying look at that so yeah i'm happy with how that came out it's nice and crisp so i'll just dampen the nail down and now i will cap it in clear acrylic and add my apex and yeah then the nails can be filed and finished off So like I said, you want to look at the nail from all different angles, but you also want to look at the nail in conjunction with the other nails that you've done to get a consistent shape and, um, what's the word? Yeah, no, if you to get a consist, consistent shape on all of your nails, you need to look at all of your nails together because if you're adding more or less acrylic on one nail it's going to be the odd one out and what you're looking for is a group of matching nails as opposed to individual nails so don't just look at the nail as an individual on its own it has to be part of the group so yeah if you find that one is thinner than the other or one is thicker than the other you will need to adjust the others to compensate for that so that they have a sense of uniformity and togetherness and that helps you with your overall finished result in a big way on your shaping these little details really do matter so yeah i'm going to show you some of the filing the routine I'm going with in this particular video is to do the side walls first. So I'm going to do the under arch and the side walls as I'm going. So I'm starting underneath the side wall, under the under arch, filing that and then rotating my file up the side of the nail and then filing, obviously I'm filing as I go, that way I'm getting my nice clean straight lines of the side walls and I'm also cleaning up that under arch to make sure there's no overhang of acrylic because that doesn't look nice when there is an overhang underneath and now I'm going to do the cuticle area so we want to blend that cuticle area nice and neat and flush we don't want a doorstep we want a nice smooth slope and I'll also file the body of the nail, remove any lumps and bumps, you know, just generally debulk it. Not, it doesn't need a lot of debulking per se, but we do want to sort of start contouring and shaping that nail towards the finished desired shape. And the e-file makes that easier to do. So once I've finished with the e-file on the body of the nail, I will finish file with my hand file and just get that contouring and smooth nail that I am after. And yeah, so I'm going up one side around the cuticle area, down the other side and then down the center of the nail from cuticle to free edge and blending and contouring so that I don't have any um, sharp edges but you know when you're looking at a nail you you don't want um squared off sharp edge you want it to be a nice oval curved and contoured nail from side wall to side so i've removed all the dust and um yeah it's top coat oh the best part let's top it off and keep it tough right then my lovelies i'll leave you to watch the rest of the video in peace Thank you very much for coming to my channel and spending some of your most precious time with me on one of my videos. I appreciate you. If you have not subscribed already, please click that subscribe button. It, I'd appreciate it and you know, I, I'd like to welcome you to the Frosty Fam. Thank you to all my wonderful subscribers, my regular viewers. I love you guys to bits. You are the best. The Frosty Fam are amazing and I appreciate all of you so, so very much. But that is all I've got for this time, peeps. If you've enjoyed this video in any way, shape or form, please click that like button. Like I said, subscribe, and if you are up to it, you are most welcome to leave me a comment. That's all I've got for this time, peeps. You take care now, and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye for now.
make 